to viewers uh, good morning once again before you is uh, Charles Onyango ready to take you through English lesson form 2 and today I would like us uh, to have a look at grammar section and the topic is present perfect continuous tense before we have a look at this I would uh, like us to have a recap of what we discussed in our previous lesson. So, my predecessor had told you something about the perfect. Again, you are also introduced to the types of tenses that we have. Uh, and just uh, very quick, we have got the present tense. We also have got the future tense. We also have got the past tense. Then, still under the present perfect continuous tense, we also have to know something about the word continuous. Continuous, if you say something is uh, continuous, then it means it is progressing. And therefore, this present continuous, uh, perfect continuous tense can also be referred to as present perfect progressive tense. So, it can also be called it can also be called present perfect progressive tense. So, to the viewers and the rest of students, you come across a question on present perfect progressive tense, then that which must be in your mind is that the question is also testing you something about present perfect continuous tense. So let us have a look at the definition of the word present perfect continuous tense. So this one simply means it is a verb tense. It is a verb tense. It is a verb tense that show that an action has taken place and still it is in the process up to the present time up to the present time something that you also have to note under the present continuous uh, tense is that it emphasizes the duration that the action has been taking place. So this one emphasizes the duration that the action has been taking place. Then the last point still under the introduction of the present perfect continuous tense is that it is formed the present perfect continuous tense is formed by uh, the auxiliary verbs by the auxiliary verbs Auxiliary verbs can also be referred to as helping verbs. And this helping verbs you are talking about is has or have followed by. So the key was, is this auxiliary verbs has and have which makes us talk of perfect. Then followed by 
been and ing form of the verb of the main verbs and at times it can also be referred to as present participle So you realize that grammar, there are some sections that is also like mathematics. So the same also applies to this present perfect continuous tense. It also has got a formula. And which formula are we talking about? For you to talk of present perfect continuous tense, you must come across a sentence that begin with, uh, it, it uh, has and have auxiliary verbs, then followed by been, then after B, you have got a verb, a main verb, that is ending with ing form. So in that case, you talk of present perfect continuous tense. Let us look at this example. Let us have a look at the example of the present perfect continuous tense. So I'm going to draw a column here so that we are able or we be in position to understand this topic in details. So here I'm going to have a column of subject. And after subject, I've said that the present perfect continuous tense, there must be has or have. So here we'll have the column of auxiliary verbs or the helping verbs. Then after auxiliary verbs, we are going to have a look at the main verb that is also referred to as the present participle. The present participle or the ing form of verb. Form of verb. So let us look at uh, a subject. So before we have a look at this, you realize this auxiliary verbs has and have, has is always used with singular. Uh, or even if it is a pronoun, you talk of uh, he, she, it. Then the have is always used with pronouns such as I, they, you, and it is so this one is commonly common with the plural forms or the second and the third person uh, pronoun so we have a look at the subject i for example so the subject i is always followed by the auxiliary verb have and we have said that for you to talk of continuous the progressive if something is in progressive you have to add the word been. And therefore, the word have and been are referred to as auxiliary verbs. Then the verb that we are, let us have a look at the example of the verb think. So you talk of think. Then how do you make it continuous? You add ing form to the word think. Then you talk of I have been thinking. And therefore, the word have been thinking is present perfect continuous tense or present perfect progressive tense. Then we also have got another example where you use the subject you. After you is also followed by have, then been, then uh, we have dream. ending with ing form, dreaming. Then we have this category of he, she, or it. So all these pronouns, 
they are followed by the auxiliary verb or the helping verb has. So in this case, you talk of has been. So you can talk of he has been or you can talk of she has been or you can talk of it has been writing. So we have got the word write. So this word write, if you are adding the word ing form to it, then you will omit this uh, e and you replace it with ing. So that you talk of he has been writing or she has been writing or it has been writing. Then another one, we also have got we. We have been then eat, you can talk of eating. Then lastly, the second last example, you. Then have been noticing. Then the last one, they. They have been then we have got laugh, laughing. Very good. So, you realize that uh, for you to talk of present perfect continuous sense, there is a formula that has to be followed. And this formula we are talking about is that after the subject, it's usually followed by the auxiliary verbs have, together with the combination of been, followed by uh, present participle or the ing form of the verbs. So sentences like this are examples of present perfect continuous tense. Therefore, this one makes us arrive at the uses. Let us look at the uses. This present perfect continuous tense, just as we saw in the previous lesson about the present perfect tenses. This present perfect continuous tense, they also have got uses. So let us have a look at some of the uses of this present perfect continuous sentences in a sentence. So the uses of present perfect continuous tense. So this uses the first use that we have, the present perfect continuous tenses, they can also be used in negative sentences. Then how are they used in the negative sentences? We insert the word note, we insert the word note, or we add the word note to the auxiliary verbs have or has. So for negative sentences, you note that down for negative sentences. We insert note to the auxiliary verbs. has or have. However, so you can talk of have not or you can talk of has not. So one of the functions or one of the uses of present perfect continuous tense is that it can also be used to tell whether sentences are negative or positive. Then when you talk of a, a negative sentence, uh, there must be that presence of the word note. So if you don't want to talk of the word have note or has note, you can also uh, contract the first auxiliary verb and note. And what do you mean by the contracting the first uh, uh, auxiliary verb with the word note? Let's write that down. Uh, in negative sentences, We can contract first auxiliary 
verb with note eg let us look at these examples here we have got the first example here I've not been playing tennis. So if you don't want to talk of, I've not been playing the tennis, you can contract the word have and not so that you talk of, I haven't been playing tennis. So we have got the subject I. Haven't been playing Tennis. So let us have a look at this example. We have got the subject I, followed by uh, the auxiliary verse have, then been, then there is also ing added to the main verb play, therefore you talk of playing. And in this case, the sentence itself we realize that it is a negative. How is it negative? We have added the word not. So instead of talking of, I have not been playing tennis, we can contract the word have and not, so that we talk of, I haven't been playing tennis. So this word here tells us, or it gives us more information that the sentence itself is a negative, then followed by being playing, to make it continuous, aspect or to make it present perfect continuous tense uh, let us look at the second use the second use so the case, second use before we look at the second use, let us, uh, this is an example where we have used the auxiliary verb have. Then what of a case where we also have got another example, has. So I've said has can be used with pronouns such as he or she or it. So let us uh, take an example of uh, it. It hasn't, it has, so you can talk of it has not been snowing. So this is a negative sentence. Then if you want to contrast, or if you want to contract the first auxiliary verse with the word not, you talk of it hasn't been snowing. So you realize that in this case here, the word hasn't has been abbreviated. Then let us now have a look at the second use of the present perfect continuous sent. So we have got the types of uh, sentences. Uh, I believe you had looked at that, the declarative sentences, exclamatory sentences, interrogative sentences, so if it comes to interrogative sentences, they are normally ending up with a question mark. And therefore, for question sentences, we can also use uh, the present perfect continuous tense in uh, question sentences. Then how does it look like? So you realize that instead of a sentence beginning with a subject, it will begin with auxiliary verbs such as has or have. So in this case, if it comes to uh, question text, let us jot that down. For question uh, sentences, for question sentences, we exchange the subject with auxiliary verbs. E.g. So, if it comes to question test, you realize that you don't start a question with a subject, but it will start with auxiliary verbs, such as either has or have, because we are talking of present 
If we talk of present perfect, we talk of either has or have. If it is in the past, we talk of had. But today's lesson is about the present perfect continuous tense. So let us have a look at these uh, examples. Let us have a look at these examples. You have been seeing. So we have got these examples here. You have been seeing. You have been seeing. So you look at this example. Let us have a, a look at what we are discussing here. The word you is a subject. Then the have been is auxiliary verbs. Then we have got the word seeing, which is participle, uh, present participle. Or you talk of ing verb form. Then from what we have just indicated under the equations, now we want to form a question. At times, in an exam, you can be given a sentence like this, you have been seeing. Then you will be instructed, rewrite a sentence beginning with the word have. Then what comes into your mind? You will re realize that this sentence itself is in which tense? The present perfect continuous tense. And therefore, when changing into the word have, then what must come into your mind is that when do you start a sentence with the auxiliary verbs has or have, if it is in question form? So therefore, an examiner will test your mind whether you can, can you be in a position to form a question from the sentence given, maybe declarative or exclamatory. So how will it be? We've said that uh, if it comes to the question uh, sentences, you exchange the subject with auxiliary verbs. So instead of talking of you have been seeing, then you will start with a sentence with have, you been seeing. So have you been seeing? So you realize that in this case here you'll talk of a present perfect continuous tense. It can also be used to form a question sentences. Let us look at the second example. Let us look at the second example. They have been ha doing they have been doing. They have been doing. So they have been doing, you realize, they, we have got the subject they. Then we also have got the auxiliary verbs, have been. This is auxiliary verbs. Then finally, we have got the verb formed, the main verb do, then we add ing to it to make it uh, a continuous participle, and therefore you talk of doing. So this one is present participle. So how do you change the, this sentence into uh, interrogative? statement or interrogative or a question sentence. We say that you have to exchange the subject with auxiliary verbs and therefore it's the word have that will come first followed by the subject they. So you talk of have, they, been, doing. So in short, what were we talking about? For question sentences, we exchange the subject with auxiliary verbs. It's the same as, so you note this, NB, NB. The subject comes, the subject comes after has or have these auxiliary verbs. 
So those are some of the common uh, things that you have to note under the question sentences. Then let us look at the last use of the present perfect continuous tense. Where else do you use the present perfect continuous tense? The present perfect continuous tense can also be used uh, to talk about an action that started in the past and it still continues up to now, even as we talk. Yes, so let us have a look. The third use. So the final use that is the third one the third use which is the final one is that it is used to talk about action it is used to talk about an action an action that started in the past that started in the past but still continues but still continues up to now so the third use of uh, present perfect continuous tense is that it is also used to show or to talk about an action which or that started in the past but even as we are talking up to now it still continues so in this case here you realize uh, that it is mostly used by the prepositions for and since. So this one is often, it is often used. With words for or since. So, to the viewers and candidates, you realize that if it comes to grammar section, a question which is mainly tested in uh, paper two, it is also helpful if it comes to the closed test that is found in paper one. So there are some questions, there are some instances where you can be given the gaps, a sample passage or a sentence with some of the deleted uh, spaces or gaps, and you will be required to fill in the spaces. So when you talk of this uh, preposition for and since, so you realize that you talk of this third point, this third use under the present perfect continuous tense, is used to talk about the action that started in the past but still continues up to now. So in most of the cases, you realize that a sentences of that nature, they are mainly accompanied with these prepositions for or since. Let us look at these examples. Example. The first example, I have been reading for two hours. I have been reading for two hours. So the word have been auxiliary verbs followed by the present participle reading. So the word have been reading is a present perfect continuous tense. And if you look at this example that I've written here on the whiteboard, you realize that the meaning of the sentence itself tells you that this person or I, who is the subject, I, who is the speaker, I'm the performer of the action, what have I been doing? I've been reading. I started reading 
but even up to now when I'm still talking, it has taken a duration of two hours. And I'm still doing the same thing. So the sentence itself means that I'm still reading even up to now. I am still reading. I'm still reading up to now. So I'm still reading up to now. So that's the meaning of the sentence. I started reading for the past two hours. And even up to now when I'm still talking, I'm still reading. Then let us look at the second example. So you realize that in that case, we use the word for. So I'm going to show you the difference between for and since. Under what circumstance do you talk of? Uh, do you use the preposition for with present perfect continuous tense? Then under what circumstance do you use the preposition since with the present perfect continuous tense? And before that, let us just look at these examples. Then we have got the second example. You have been studying since 9 o'clock. You have been studying... You have been studying since 9, or let, let me write it in words, since 9 o'clock. So, have been studying. This sentence itself, it also means that you are still studying, you are still studying you are still studying up to now. Very good. Third example uh, let us now have a look at the sentence that asks the question. And just in our second point, where we talked of uh, present perfect continuous sentences can also be used in uh, interrogative sentences or the question sentences, let us now look at the example of a question where the action, the action that started in the past but still continues up to now. And just as we had said before, a sentence, the question sentences or the interrogative sentences, they have to start with auxiliary verbs has or have. So we have got this example. How long have you been learning English? So someone asks you a question like that. How long have you been learning English? So you look at this question, it says, someone is asking you a question like this. Then what comes into your mind? Meaning that this question is asked. This person is trying to ask you about the duration. Even as we speak, you are still learning English. But he or she is in position, she is eager or is eager to know the duration that you've taken to learn English. So it's something, you started learning it, but even at this point, up to this juncture, when the person is asking you a question, you are still learning. So you look at this sentence itself, you realize that the action itself, which is learning, started in the past, and even as the question is being sought or is being asked, you are still learning English. Therefore, you, the possible response that you will give here is that I've been learning English for three hours, example, or I've been learning English since morning. So I can see, you, uh, up to that point, you realize how these prepositions for and since are used. So the question form itself can also be framed to show a, a learner or to give a clue to the learner that the sentence with the present perfect continuous tense can also be used to form a question. 
to give someone a clue that an action started in the past, but even as we speak, it still continues. Then we also have got the last sentence here. We ask, Halake and Hussein, Halake and Hussein. And in this case, I want us to use the negative sentence. Halak and Hussein have not stopped smoking. So, no, let me make it. Halak and Hussein have not been smoking. Yes, have not been smoking. So you realize in that sentence again I was, uh, uh, it is a bit confusing because we also have got the two verbs that are already in place. So we have got the word have, then not, which can also be contracted using of haven't been smoking. So the word have not been smoking. So this one means that these two individuals, we talk about Alake and Hussein, and therefore use the Pronoun they, meaning that it's more than one person. They are smoking up to now. These people started smoking, and even up, uh, up to this moment when we are speaking, they are still smoking, meaning that they have not stopped smoking. Even up to this juncture, when? We are talking. So, I want you to note this. We talked about this point here. In most of the cases, if you are using a present perfect continuous tense to show that or to talk about an action that started in the past and still continues to use the prepositions for and since. So, there is something that you realize if you look at these examples that I've given here especially this was which have the prepositions for and since, there's something that you'll note which is key to this point. And therefore, it's necessary that you put this down. This word we use for to talk about, we use for to talk about, to talk about a period of time, e.g., when do we talk of period of time, when do we talk of period of time, we have got the examples, we have got these examples, three hours. So you can talk of, like this question, let us use the example of the question that we asked, how long have you been learning English? I've been learning English for three hours, meaning that the period, we are talking about the period of time. It is not specific. For the last three hours you have been writing a period of time that you have been taking to learn this English. So you come across, I told you earlier on that this grammar past, they are also uh, linked or they are related to the closed test which is found in English paper one. So you come across a sentence like that where you have been told, for example, I've been learning dash three hours. Then you realize that something, a sentence like that tells you something about a period of time. Then in that case, you're supposed to use the preposition for. So I've been learning, that is a present perfect continuous tense, then for three hours. If you don't want to use the three hours, you can also use two months. You, could, you have been doing something for two months. You can also talk of one decade. You can also talk of uh, a period of time. You can talk of ages. You can also talk of something like ever. Then what makes this different from since? So we use since to talk about a point in past time. We use since 
to talk about a point in past tense. So, you look at these examples of uh, since where you use the since, there must be point. You have to be very specific. You are talking about a certain point. And when do you use them? Instead of talking of, uh, I've been learning for uh, English for three hours, you can talk of, I've been learning English since nine o'clock. So you realize that the point that you are talking about here is about nine o'clock and something that happened in the past. So you realize uh, there's something that you also have to note. You also have to note this. We, for can be used with all tenses, but since is mostly used It's mostly used with only participle. Uh, it's mainly used with the participle uh, or the perfect tenses. As if no spot principle, let me use the word perfect tenses. It's mainly used with perfect tenses. So, back to what we were doing, we use since to talk about a point in the past, e.g., so instead of talking of three hours, because that one is telling you about a period of time, then we can talk of a point, a point in time, so here you talk of nine o'clock. So, you are talking about a point in time. Then, another example, we can also talk, because instead of talking of months, two months, three months, and etc., you can specify and you talk of 1st January. 1st January. For how long have you been studying English? Since 1st January. So you are talking about a specific time. Then, again, you can also talk about, instead of decades, you talk of 700 days. Still, since 2010, Instead of talking of over 10 years, you talk of since 2010, you are talking about a specific a point in time. Then you can also give, talk of, uh, I left since I left school, or at the beginning of time. So please, uh, you look at this example, for example, we, he has been living in Bangkok since he left school. So in that case, we are talking about a specific time that is mainly used in this sense. So since I left school. Or you can talk of four. You talk of four. I've been studying for three hours. Another example, I've been watching TV since 7 p.m. Or Hoyo hasn't been feeling well for two hours. Halaki has been playing football for three hours. So with those remarks, I believe you come across a question in future where you are given, uh, you are told to use, construct a sentence using the present perfect continuous tense. You will be in position to tell what to use. When you are asked a question where to use the prepositions for and since with present perfect continuous tense, I believe viewers and the students you will be in position to tell. And therefore, with those few remarks, allow me to wish you the best moment and best luck. Uh, anytime you come across questions touching on these areas, I believe that you will be in position to tackle all sorts of questions. Inshallah, have a blessed day.